Welcome to another video lecture from Welker's Wikonomics. Today's lecture is going to explore the concept of a linear supply function, which, as you know, is a new component of the IB Economics Higher Level Syllabus. In our previous lecture, we discussed linear demand functions, which displayed the law of demand and the downward sloping nature between a demand curve and the price of a good. Today, we'll be exploring the direct relationship between the quantity supplied of a good and the price for that good. So let's begin by looking at a typical supply function. Just like our demand function, a supply function includes the quantity, which is a function of variable C plus D times the price of a good. The C variable in a supply function tells us the autonomous level of supply. In other words, how much output would be produced if the price of a good were zero. Typically, at a price of zero, no output would be produced in an industry since there is no opportunity for profits. Therefore, the C variable will in most cases be a negative number. The D variable in a supply function is the price coefficient of supply. This tells us how much quantity will increase for every one dollar or one franc or one euro increase in the price of the good. In that way, the D variable is an indicator of the responsiveness of producers to changes in price. The higher the D variable, the more responsive producers will be as the price of good increases or decreases. The lower the D variable, the less responsive producers will be to price changes. Notice also that unlike in our demand function, in a supply function, the D variable will always be positive. This is because of the direct relationship between price and quantity supply explained by the law of supply. Let's consider the following supply equation for pizzas. Let's say that the quantity supplied of pizzas equals negative 200 plus 140 times the price. This implies, of course, that if the price of pizzas were zero, then the quantity supplied would be negative 200. Since this is impossible, we can assume that at a price of zero, no pizzas will be supplied. Using this supply function, we can easily derive a supply schedule. At a price of zero, what is the quantity supplied? Let's find out. At a price of zero, to find the quantity supplied, we simply apply the price of zero to our supply equation. So we have negative 200 plus 140 times zero. Clearly, the quantity supplied at a price of zero is negative 200 pizzas. At a price of two, the quantity supplied is negative 200 plus 140 times the price of two, so we have negative 200 plus 280, which is 80. We'll continue down our supply schedule and solve for the quantity supplied at each of the prices seen here from zero to $10. Here we have completed our supply schedule using our supply function. As we can see, as the price of pizzas increases, the quantity supplied by pizza producers increases demonstrating, predictably, a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied, which is according to the law of supply. Using the information from our supply schedule, we can derive a, de a supply curve. However, we have sort of a problem here. Usually, on a supply and demand diagram, we do not show negative values in the quantity axis. As we can see, supply and demand diagrams typically start at the origin, or zero. So what we need to find is where our supply curve intersects the price axis and therefore begins to slope upwards. To do this, we must solve for the p-intercept. In other words, where the supply curve intercepts the vertical axis. The p-intercept occurs where the quantity supplied is equal to zero. Therefore, all we have to do is set the quantity supplied equal to zero and solve for p. To do this, we simply set 0 equal to negative 200 plus 140p. Once we simplify this equation, we see that the p-intercept, or the price at which quantity supplied is equal to 0, is at exactly 1.43. This means at a price of $1.43, producers of pizzas will begin becoming willing and able to produce pizzas. This is where our supply will start. And here, upwards. 
to plot our linear supply curve, all we have to do is plot a couple of points from our supply schedule. Just a moment ago, we calculated that the price intercept, or the price at which the firms will, be getting, will begin to supply pizzas, is at $1.43, which, as we can see, is right about here on our vertical axis. All we need to do now is choose one more point along our supply schedule, and when we connect these two points, we'll have our linear supply curve. Let's look at the quantity, quantity supplied at a price of $8. At $8, the quantity supplied is equal to 920 pizzas. So from $8, we can go over to 920, which is right about there, and down, place a point on our graph. All we have to do now is connect these two points, and what we have is the linear supply curve for pizzas. Notice, of course, not surprisingly, that the supply curve is upward sloping, indicating a direct relationship between the price of pizzas and the quantity that pizza firms would be willing and able to supply. In fact, this supply curve would continue to slope upwards since we did not quite get to the price of 10. But beyond $9, the quantity supply continues to increase, of course, corresponding with the law of supply. There we have the linear supply curve for pizzas derived from a supply schedule, which itself was derived from a supply function. Again, notice that the quantity intercept is a negative number in this case. Therefore, on our graph, we can't quite see where the supply curve intercepts the quantity axis. However, by determining what the price intercept of our supply curve was, we figured out that only at a price of $1.43 would firms begin supplying pizzas. Therefore, the supply curve begins at $1.43 on our, on our vertical axis. The slope of the supply curve is determined by the responsiveness of pizza producers to changes in the price of pizza. In this case, for every $1 increase in the price of pizzas, firms will, will supply 140 additional pizzas. Therefore, the supply curve slopes according to the D variable in our linear supply function. The C variable, as we discussed, indicates where the supply curve would intersect the horizontal axis, which in this case is at a negative quantity. Therefore, we do not even see the point at which the supply curve intersects the, the horizontal axis. In our next video, we will talk about the determinants of supply and what can cause the C variable to change, which, of course, as you might assume, would cause the supply curve to shift inwards or outwards.